If you are self-employed in Germany, you are either working as a freelancer or engaged in commercial activities. And if your self-employment is a commercial business, then in addition to the income tax declaration and the value-added tax declaration, you also have to make a third tax declaration, namely the trade tax declaration. And for the trade tax, the contact is not the tax office, but the responsible municipality, meaning the municipality where your business is registered. You can still complete the trade tax declaration online via Elster. This is a great advantage, and we want to do this together in this video. That means we will log into Elster online together. I will take you along on the screen, and we will click through this trade tax declaration step by step. But before we do that, let's cover a little bit of theory. What happens to this trade tax declaration after we have created it online via Elster? We prepare the trade tax declaration, then click send, and this trade tax declaration goes to the tax office. The tax office then determines the trade income, which is the profit. From this trade income, the trade tax assessment amount is calculated. You will then receive a notice from the tax office regarding the trade tax assessment amount. Based on this notice regarding the trade tax assessment amount, you do not have to pay anything, so there is no tax resulting from it. But you can and should urgently report this trade tax assessment amount in your income tax declaration because you can credit the trade tax you pay as a self-employed individual in your income tax declaration. This means that as a trader, you do have to file an additional tax declaration, namely the trade tax declaration, but in most cases, you actually end up paying no additional taxes because you can credit the trade tax in your income tax declaration. You can credit up to four times the trade tax assessment amount. And that's exactly why you need this notice because you get the trade tax assessment amount from the notice regarding the trade tax assessment amount. That means you will receive this from the tax office, but you are not the only person who receives this notice regarding the trade tax assessment amount. Because in the background, the tax office sends this information about the trade tax assessment amount to the responsible municipality, which is your municipality. And this municipality calculates the trade tax to be paid based on the trade tax assessment amount and the specific assessment rate applicable to the municipality. This assessment rate is determined by each individual municipality. It can be at 300%, at 400%, at 450%, and so on. That means your municipality determines that. And if you simply look up your municipality plus the trade tax assessment rate, you will also find out how high the trade tax is for you and your municipality. This actually leads to the situation where you have a higher tax burden from trade tax in some municipalities in Germany than in others. Typically, for example, Leverkusen is relatively affordable, while other metropolitan regions such as Munich or Berlin and Hamburg are actually more expensive in Germany. And we remember that we can credit up to four times the trade tax assessment amount in the income tax declaration. This means that if the assessment rate in your municipality is 400% or lower, you can actually credit the entire trade tax paid in your income tax declaration. If the assessment rate of your municipality is above 400%, unfortunately, you can only credit 400%, and anything beyond that will actually result in a higher tax burden for you. And this calculation, which the municipality carries out, is based on the trade tax assessment amount and the assessment rate from which they create a trade tax notice. You will then receive this trade tax assessment notice from your municipality. This will result in either an additional payment or a refund for you. Note that in some municipalities, the calculation of the trade tax is also handled by the tax offices. That means some municipalities have said, well, we have the tax office, so why should we also deal with tax calculations? Let's just have the tax office handle the whole thing. And with these introductory words and this explanation, let's switch to my screen and Take a look at the trade tax declaration together. We are on the home page of Elster Online, which means we are logged in here. At the top, we see Elster Online, your online tax office. Forms and services. And then we go here to all the forms. And then we see all the forms that we can fill out online at Elster. Of course, the trade tax is also included among all the forms, which we can find here. Let's unfold this once, and then we will also find the trade tax declaration here, which means the trade tax A. And now we click on it, then we select the year. In this video, we are preparing the trade tax declaration for the year 2023, and we continue. Here you have the option to transfer the data from the previous year. This means that if you already completed the trade tax declaration online with Elster last year, you can simply copy the data from last year to this year. This makes sense primarily because your name has probably not changed, your address has not changed, your tax number has not changed, and so on. 
This means you can simply copy all the information that you entered last year to the current year. Since I have not yet completed a trade tax declaration in this account, I will simply click on Continue without data transfer. You can certainly do that. Then I have the option here to select the trade tax declaration and specific attachments. These attachments are special cases that I do not want to address in this video. If you have specific questions about them, feel free to leave a comment under this video. Also, a little tip, you can go to ChatGPT and search for Custom GPT Elster GPT within ChatGPT. Elster GPT can actually help you with Elster Online, meaning, for example, with your trade tax declaration in Elster Online, and then Elster GPT can answer your questions or I can simply do so in the comment section. That means we simply select the trade tax declaration here and then click on continue. And then we see the familiar interface of Elster. This means that up here we see the three tabs that we will go through. First, we enter a whole range of data, then we can review everything, and finally, we can submit it directly to the tax office. Here on the left side, we see the structure of the form. This means that if we click on this circle with the three lines, we will see the entire trade tax declaration form. So, we have 21 individual sections in front of us. That makes quite an impression at first. However, I want to make it very clear that much of this does not concern you. If you are a completely normal sole proprietor with an ongoing business and a current self-employment, then we will skip over a lot here. But of course, we will also look at all the fields individually together, and we will start with the home page of the form. Initially, it will focus on the most important basic data. Here at the top, as in every Elster online form, you have the option to import data from your profile. We just talked about data transfer, and it was basically about copying the previous year, to put it simply. You can also store information in your Elster online profile, such as your address, tax number, and so on. And then you can basically transfer the information and data from your Elster online profile into any tax declaration. Then you don't have to enter this in every single form. The income tax declaration, value added tax declaration, trade tax declaration, advance value added tax return, summary report, and so on. Each time, you can simply transfer this data here. I'm not going to do that here at this point because we want to see and discuss each individual field right here. And in the next field, very important, you enter your tax number. And here it is about the, as already stated here, business tax number. You may have a whole range of tax numbers. I will also link a video for you below in the video description. You may have your personal tax ID, a value-added tax ID, and a regular tax number for your income tax declaration. Under certain circumstances, you may also have another tax number for your business tax types 2001. You have this whenever you live in a different place than where you conduct your self-employment. Then you have a tax number for your personal tax types, meaning your income tax declaration, and a different tax number for your business tax types. You must provide the business tax number here. If you do not have a second regular tax number, which is usually the case if you simply registered your self-employment at home, then you only have this one tax number. You can find this one tax number, for example, on your most recent trade tax assessment notice. But if you work where you live, you can also look at the last income tax assessment or the value-added tax assessment. It consists of a number that is always separated by slashes. For example, if we select the federal state here, we will see exactly the form. That means, here we always have slashes in the middle, and you will enter them here. And once you have done that, you go to the next page, and then you will see on the next page, yes, I would say in all its glory, the entire trade tax declaration once again. Here, we don't want to spend too much time and will go directly to the next page and into the first section. And the questions are still relatively simple, because first you need to ask, what is actually the name of your business? If you are a sole proprietor, then your business is usually named after you. This means you simply write your name here, and at some point, you have indicated a business purpose or object of the business during the business registration. You can either write everything in here or check the last trade tax declaration. If you have selected the data transfer option here, something will already appear. And if you haven't actively updated that, then the same applies here as what you entered last year. The next section is about the legal form and the type of activity. And this is an excellent example of why the trade tax declaration looks so incredibly extensive, but in most cases, most of the fields are irrelevant to you. I am recording this video, like all the videos on this channel, primarily for sole proprietorships. And now let's just read the first line up here. 
the business is operated as a sole proprietorship. This means that if this applies, you can check the box in field 10 and most of you can ignore everything else here. But this trade tax declaration, and this must be kept in mind, is filled out by every commercial enterprise in Germany. This means that the VW Group, which must pay trade tax in Germany, likely in Wolfsburg, actually has to fill out this form or hire some tax advisor. And you can see the whole thing when you simply look at field 14 to see which legal forms are possible here. That is obviously a whole lot. It can get super complicated if you are a large company with multiple branches or, for example, even if you operate a home business or a traveling business, or if the sole proprietorship has decided to change its legal form during the year. So if you converted your sole proprietorship in the relevant year, in this case in 2023, to a GmbH, or if you converted a partnership, OHG or GBR, to a GmbH, and so on, then you need to enter additional information here. I strongly assume that if you have been dealing with the whole topic of rebranding, then hopefully you have a tax advisor who can help you select the right fields here. Then you would just have to select again what the information from the previous company was. If none of this applies to you, then simply check the box at the top of the field, and we can click on the next page. And the next page should, in most cases, not be relevant for you either. This page is about supplementary information for the tax declaration. So if you want to provide an explanation for your tax declaration, for instance, if you want to clarify certain matters from your tax declaration, such as the rebranding, why you made specific decisions, why you accounted for certain things in a particular way, and so on, then hopefully you have a tax advisor who can assist you with that. But then you can explain certain information or options to the tax office here, so that the tax office knows how certain matters should be handled. In most cases, you simply do not enter anything here. Then we move directly to the next section, which is the fourth section. This section concerns the reporting of cross-border tax arrangements. And I would strongly advise you, if cross-border tax arrangements are a topic for you, that you have hopefully informed yourself thoroughly about it and have a tax advisor or a lawyer with whom you can make such tax arrangements. And then hopefully this person can tell you more precisely what you need to enter here. If you have never heard of this, that's perfectly fine. You can skip the fourth area and go directly to the fifth area. And then you come to information about the trade operation, which means a section that should probably be somewhat more relevant to you as well. The first area here concerns business locations. Business locations could be colloquially translated as branch offices or sites. This means that if you have, for example, a bakery chain with 20 bakery locations, you must submit a separate declaration for each individual location, provided they are in different municipalities. Then you would need to select, for example, in field 26, that you had business establishments in multiple municipalities during the calendar year 2023. If you are simply a web designer, or like me, just creating videos that you then publish on the internet, or if you are a programmer or a consultant and your business is based at home in your office. For example, then you do not have multiple branches or locations, etc. Then you simply select no here. There were no business locations. If your business locations are large enough to be located in multiple municipalities, then you must select yes here as well. Otherwise, you simply select no here too. Then it could be the case that you have relocated your business premises, meaning you had a move, and you would select it here. If that is not the case, then it remains a no here as well. If you have moved, meaning you have relocated your business premises, you will need to provide several additional details here. For example, when did this all happen and who was actually responsible for this business location before? So where was the business location before and where is it now? This is so the tax office can understand exactly when and from where to where the move took place. If you, as you say, have always been registered at home and worked, then you say no three times here and move on to the next area. The next section is about the HEBA number. This is not your tax number, rather, it is the tax number of the municipality. You can either Google it by simply searching for your assessment number, tax number, and then the municipality, or you can just look at your last trade tax declaration. The assessment number is listed there. In general, it usually applies as well. However, my personal experience is that if you have just started your business and simply do not know this identification number, you can leave that field blank. I have never heard of any issues arising from leaving it empty. The tax office can find this information out on its own if you have always been registered at one address, as the municipality is relatively straightforward in that case, and the tax office will obtain the information. Additionally, Elster Online does not provide any error messages in this regard. 
If you leave this field blank, if you started your business last year, or under certain circumstances, if you have stopped your self-employment, then fields 4 and 30 and 5 and 30 will be relevant for you, because here you need to enter when you started an activity. You should write the founding date here, for example, July 1st, 2023. The same applies, of course, if you stopped your self-employment last year. In that case, you would write the date of your deregistration here, for example, NOV 2023. Then this is your last trade tax declaration that you will submit, but you need to indicate this here. It will be the final choice. The next section is about the corporate group. The concept of corporate group taxation is also a broad topic and will not apply to most of you. In the case of corporate groups, it is always about multiple companies that are somehow related. If you only have a sole proprietorship, then you don't have to deal with this at all and can actually leave this entire section on corporate structure blank and click to the next page. The next section is about your profit from commercial operations. You probably did at least some bookkeeping during the year, and now you have a profit and loss statement. This means you have totaled all your business income, subtracted all your business expenses, and in the end, you have a profit. And so far, in this trade tax declaration, that is, in the first five sections here in 2001, we have only provided information about your legal form, your structure, business locations, corporate relationships, and so on, and we have not yet indicated anywhere how much profit you actually made. And you do this right here at the top in field 39, profit from commercial operations before applying the seven and so on. Here, you simply write down the profit, meaning what you have determined in the context of the income surplus calculation, for example, 30,000 by the way, if you should have incurred a loss in a year, you simply write a minus sign in front of it. By the way, it is extremely important that you do this, because then you will receive a trade tax amount with a negative income, and you can actually offset these losses in other years. This means that it acts like a tax credit for you. Therefore, it is very, very important that if you have incurred a loss in a year, it should be in your interest to submit a trade tax declaration, because it acts like a tax credit for you in the following years. And most of the other fields here on this page are not relevant for you as a sole proprietorship. I told you, we skip a tremendous amount in the trade tax declaration, and we can see this already just with partnerships. Again, only with partnerships. Then there are, under certain circumstances, income sources that are exempt from trade tax. If this is the case for you, then hopefully you know the whole process. You need to enter here what type of exemption it is, specifically under the trade tax law. But exactly where, meaning which number? In 3, it actually exempts your profits, your revenues from the trade tax. This means that here you write which paragraph applies, and below that you write how high the profit is. So, what is the profit that is exempt from trade tax? You usually do this here, when your revenues and income are essentially exempt from trade tax. Down here, there are also some very special cases, such as Profits of the economic business operation according to 15, and then this concerns the Investment Tax Act. Most of you here simply have nothing at all. This means that if you don't have any special circumstances that you hopefully know about, you can just skip the whole thing and click on the next page. And if you have any questions about any field, feel free to leave me a comment under this video. However, with the trade tax, you do not tax your trade income, meaning the pure profit, but rather a different amount. There are also additions and deductions related to the trade income. The additions are items that you have claimed as business expenses in your accounting, but that you now need to add back to your profit. Here in the trade tax, this means, in summary, that you cannot actually deduct these expenses from the trade tax, but you can from the income tax, because in the ongoing bookkeeping you were able to deduct these costs. However, here in the trade tax, you need to calculate the trade income to increase these costs again. This means they are not deductible. This primarily includes financing costs, such as interest expenses, leasing costs, etc. That means you cannot deduct it from the tax, specifically from the trade tax. You might say, that sounds incredibly unfair, and it may indeed be so. However, you should keep in mind that there is an exemption amount here. This means that it only applies when you have financing costs that exceed a certain amount per year, and these are actually the financing costs. You cannot deduct the pure repayment costs from your taxes, rather, it is really the interest expenses and leasing costs that exceed that amount that you cannot claim. If your financing costs are below per year, you can also deduct them from your taxes, and you enter these additions here in the seventh section. This means here, for example, expenses for debts, such as interest, pension payments, 
and ongoing liabilities, profit shares for silent partners if you have silent partners, as well as rent and lease payments, including leasing rates for electric vehicles. This means that if you finance an electric vehicle, you need to enter all of this here, and so on. You need to go through all these financing costs now, find them in your accounting from the respective booking accounts, and enter them here. The second area, which should not be relevant for most of you, concerns financing shares for a second fiscal year ending in the assessment period, usand. That means, if your fiscal year is not identical to your calendar year, then I cannot recommend it to you, by the way. But if that were the case, then you would need to fill out these fields again for the second fiscal year, which ended in 2023. Then there are additional calculations for limited partnerships by shares that you probably should not have, as well as shares in the losses of domestic or foreign partnerships. Here, too. It is of course about the participation that you hold in your business assets, meaning within the scope of your self-employment. If you hold shares in domestic or foreign partnerships, you must indicate that here. If you hold any private investments, you do not report them here in the trade tax declaration. And yes, that's basically it. Now, let's move on to the next page. And here it concerns profits from shares in certain corporations. This is honestly less common, but you may need to provide information if, very importantly, you hold shares in these corporations as part of the business assets related to your self-employment. This means that if you have that, you will enter your participations here, and the information you need to provide will not apply to 99% of you. Therefore, we move on to the next area, which is the deductions. Deductions are essentially the counterpart to the additions. Additions increase the profit for the trade tax, and thus also the trade tax. The cuts are a good thing. The cuts reduce my profit from commercial operations, and, therefore, also reduce my trade tax burden. And you can make deductions if you have real estate in your business assets, such as land, houses, etc. If you hold them in business assets, you can actually make reductions here. A very important note, really think carefully about whether you want to hold properties and houses and business assets in general. This has significant tax disadvantages elsewhere, because the sale of this real estate constitutes business income on which you have to pay taxes. Therefore, before you start assigning any property to the business assets in order to make deductions, be sure to consult with a tax advisor. The whole situation has far-reaching consequences and rarely makes honest sense from a tax perspective. Therefore, think about it. But if you have real estate in your business assets, you can deduct it here, and thereby save on trade tax. Then you see here a section that deals with shares of profits from domestic and foreign partnerships. This means exactly the opposite, as we had losses from domestic and foreign partnerships in the additions. Important, this is again only about investments that you actually hold in the business assets of your sole proprietorship. Why do you have to report then at all? If you have a stake in the partnership, you have already paid trade tax at the level of the partnership. And therefore, the legislator does not want you to pay trade tax again at the level of the shareholder's participation. That means if you make a profit with a partnership, you are already paying trade tax within that partnership. And if you distribute the profit now, essentially into the business assets of your sole proprietorship, then this profit should not be taxed again at that level with trade tax. Therefore, you are allowed to deduct these profits from partnerships so that no trade tax is incurred on them. This should be more of an exception for most of you, but if that is the case, please enter it here. And then we come to an area that I also find noteworthy, which is about contributions, commonly known as donations or membership fees. If you are a sole proprietorship, you can deduct donations as special expenses in your income tax declaration. This means that making donations from business assets in 2001 is usually seen as more negative from a tax perspective, so I generally cannot recommend it. However, we must remember that a trade tax declaration must also be submitted by other legal forms, such as a GmbH, which is a type of corporation. A corporation has no privacy and does not file an income tax declaration. This means that a limited liability company, GmbH, cannot deduct donations as special expenses within the framework of the income tax declaration. This means that for a GmbH, it makes sense, for example, to make donations in order to reduce the trade tax. For you as a sole proprietorship, it makes less sense because you should simply report your donations as special expenses in your income tax declaration. That means you haven't paid donations from the business assets, at least in most cases. 
If so, please feel free to enter everything here. And with that, we have actually discussed the reduction quite well then. We'll move on to the next page. And in the 10th area, we also have some exciting exceptions. Specifically, this concerns commercial ships and international traffic and public law broadcasting institutions. If you happen to be that person, you need to provide some information here. If you are not, then we will go directly to section 11. And in the next section, we will discuss information in the corporate group fields. I briefly mentioned the term corporate group earlier. In a corporate group, there are several companies that are somehow interconnected, and there are some tax pitfalls and important considerations to keep in mind. If you simply have a sole proprietorship, then you are not a corporate group, and you do not need to fill anything out here. We can already see that we are entering a realm in the trade tax declaration where it just goes from one special case to another. And that's why we're going to take a look at the entire structure and see what else is actually there. Here we also see that in the next cases, it actually goes from one super specific case to the next. These are all somehow peculiarities and exceptions, etc. Such as negative income from the sale or valuation of financial instruments or shares in a corporation. Then it concerns carry forward trade losses and loss determinations. This could be relevant for you if you have incurred a loss in recent years. If you incurred a loss in the year for which we are currently preparing the tax declaration, you would enter this loss in Section 6, specifically under Profit from Commercial Operations, by simply writing a minus sign before the number, thereby recording your loss. However, if you want to offset this loss in the following years, you can provide information here. Then there are also restructuring gains and a few details if you change your billing relationship, SOS slash EOS, and possibly want to carry over the losses, and so on. What you can remember is that the trade tax is heavily influenced by very specific regulations for a whole range of exceptions that you do not have. If you have a relatively simple and straightforward business as a sole proprietorship, then you actually don't need to fill out anything from Section 9 onward. And if you have something like that, I strongly wish for you to have a tax advisor who can help you with it and who can also assist you in explaining everything properly in the trade tax declaration. If you don't have a tax advisor, then check the video description below. I would be happy to help you find a suitable tax advisor. And with that, we might also directly move on to the last area, which is Area 21, specifically the area of assistance in preparing the tax declaration. So please don't write TaxFit for the self-employed YouTube channel here. Instead, write the name of the tax advisor who helped you prepare this tax declaration. To be honest, you usually don't fill this out because if you have a tax advisor, they will typically handle the trade tax declaration for you, and that's actually the end of it. This means you can go down here to check everything, then you can review everything you entered, and with one click, you can send it directly to the tax office. Then the whole process I explained at the beginning of the video will proceed smoothly. This means that the tax office will first determine a profit and thus calculate the tax assessment amount, which will then be communicated to you and the municipality, and so on. If you forgot, take another look at the beginning of this video. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any more questions, I can imagine that you might, because there are just so many exceptions, and exceptions to the exceptions and exceptions to the exceptions, etc., in trade tax. If you do, feel free to leave a comment under this video. And if you need software that makes everything a bit easier or a tax advisor to handle it all for you, then check out my recommendations below in the video description or right here. Or you can simply watch the next video on this channel for distraction, like this one or this one.